we have a quorum, so um, we are going to uh, call uh, this meeting to order. All right. Um, the agenda, adoption of agenda. I have a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Okay, I'll second it. It is the proper move and second that we adopt the agenda. Are there any questions? Um, I have, I have uh, one on page eight. I think we straightened this out in the um, uh, last board meeting we had. But that motion on page eight there, uh, we did say uh, we were going to refer this to the workshop and have individuals from the school to provide information. Um, I don't have a problem with letting it stay like it is, but uh, in the future, I think we need to read back our motions to make sure we have them clear. Uh, that's my only comment there. All right. Um, any other uh, questions about the agenda? Uh, Dr. Okay. Morris, you're talk this is Andy. You're, you're talking about the minutes, right? Yes. Okay. So we're, but we're just only adopting the agenda, right? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let, let's do that then. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Adoption I just to make sure the I was motion has been. Uh, yeah. Thank you, uh, Mr. Smith. The, uh, the motion has been made that we uh, and second that we adopt the agenda. Are there any questions? Those in favor, vote by saying aye. 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 Okay. The, the motion uh, unanimously passed. Um, adopt the meeting minutes, and I, I just uh, stated. Uh, um, my my concern there, but um, that's all I have. We will do that going forward, Dr. Morris. Uh, uh, we agree that that, for the time being, makes best sense in light of us being remote. Okay. Uh, do I have a motion to adopt the minutes? So moved. I'll, I'll second, second it. Okay. Then probably move and second, uh, motion made by uh, Representative Howard and uh, second by uh, Mr. Smith. Are there any questions? Yeah, just uh, real quick, the, I wanted to understand your concern, Dr. Morris, and is it that motion that's highlighted? Yes. Uh, I think we cleared it up in the last board meeting. Okay. Yeah, um, and Mr. Smith, we cleared it up at the last board meeting. The, the challenge that we have is while while Dr. Morris's comment is correct, it was made in executive session. When it came out, we don't have it on tape. So it was hard to reconcile that. That's why we brought it back to the board to, in essence, restate it. Okay, so it's really a procedural question. Okay. Yeah. So, so I think going forward, as uh, Dr. Martin said, we will, if, if something like that is discussed in executive session, we will restate it again. Um, right. And um, it's make sure there's consensus so that we don't have this happen again. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure I understood what the concern was. Thank you. Okay. Uh, those in favor of adopting the. Uh, Minutes, vote by saying aye. 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 Uh, those opposed, nay. The motion unanimously uh, carries. Um, matter referred uh, from the board of directors. Um, uh, Mr. Andor? Yes, uh, Dr. Mark, we have no motions at this time. Okay. No motion. We'll move on to. Uh, number five, monthly financial reports. Uh, Ms. Uh, Andrews. Good morning, everyone. Under my section, you'll have our usual. Can everybody hear me okay? Yep. Yes. Ms. Ram. Okay. Um, under this section, you have your usual financial reports, along with a list of our contracts that we currently have in motion and any potential upcoming contracts. 
So where I go, everybody will go to page 10. Page 10 is where I usually, it's a condensed motion, I mean condensed method of every, all the information you have. So we start out with our net income. Um, at least this month for this month, we had a net income of 163,000. Our year to date, bringing us to 2.14 million. Total revenue year to date is 22.3, which is um, compared to nine twelfths of our budget and where we budgeted at 30.33 million. Our collections represent about 74 74% of what we projected. Total expenses year to date are 20 million 17. And all numbers are approximate. Again, this uh, compared to nine twelfths of our budget to where we expected to spend 32.56 million. So we're like 79% of what we budgeted. Um, to it, we're reporting through March, we represent 75% of our fiscal year. So in that, all of what we're reporting, you guys asked to keep a list or a running tally of what we paid to the contract operator being Transdev. So to date, what we paid to um, Transdev is a little over 61 million 747. That includes all liquidated damages assessed. Below that, we also asked that we um, let you know what we're paying on in that month to our contract services. So here you have what we paid to ABLE, Algier Consulting, Bird Farm McNair, Chernoff, IT Solutions, Malden Jenkins, Michael Dantzler, Nexon and Pruitt, and so on. And these two are also listed on our contract spending um, tab. On the board expenses, we didn't have anything because we're doing everything remotely, so we don't have to spend the money for lunch. We listed our employee trainings, any trainings that happened or that occurred through that period. Again, since we're reporting through March, some of this may have happened or been paid for before and didn't hit our books by a credit card until around the March time frame. Speaking on our cash in the banks, Wells Fargo, our operating account has almost 7 million in it. Optus Bank, roughly at 6.5 million. Our local government investment pool has 17 million. And money collected through the penny funds to date is 114 million. And that is the end of my report, unless anybody has any questions. Uh, you mentioned something about lunch. Uh, we, we, we pay, uh, you're talking about lunch for the board meetings or lunch yes. for staff on a daily basis? During the board meetings, we normally provide oh. lunch during the board meeting. So that would fall yeah. underneath the board expenses. And since we hadn't been meeting, there's no expenses to report. Right. Uh, Mr. Smith and Representative Howard, look at page 17 and 18. What do you all do um, uh, at your meetings? Do you uh, blow these up or what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't have anything that's quite well. I will say I, I just gave our city council something that's about this scale. Um, yeah, it's a good question. It's hard to it's hard to get all that data. You know, I guess. Now that we've got everything electronic, we could we can actually blow it up. We should be able to blow it up on our own computers if we need to zoom in, but it's hard. It's hard to see all that. And and Dr. Morris, if you don't mind, where it gets to, like Andy said, since everything is electronically, yes, you can blow it up. But when we're printing out the packages and trying to put in several different page sizes, makes it kind of hard to keep it to where we print. So we did the best we could with getting you know, I think these should have been printed out on the legal size paper, but where we can't say it makes it hard for the printer to keep up and not jam with changing the paper sizes back and forth. Okay, and how about you, uh, Representative Howard? Well, my staff, I'm, I'm, I'm visually impaired. My staff usually blow, blow all that up for me where I can really, you know, okay. see what's going on. All right. I I haven't uh, worked in a long time, but I know when I was at work, uh, we used to uh, blow it up and give uh, staff uh, a, a, a copy that uh, at least met the 12 uh, size fund. But anyway, if, you, if 
if this is the best you can do, then I guess we can't do anything about it. Now, um, these, are, these are font size 12, like I say, because there's so much information trying to put it on one page, it kind of shrinks it down. So again, we can make them big, big, big and neat. They'll just be like separate inserts. So we'll have to print the packet out and then go back and print these separately, like as separate editions. And I know sometimes you guys don't like it to be separate. So we can get you this if you want it larger. We'll just print the packet you want, and then for the ones that you want blown up, we'll have to print them and give them to you. It won't be inserted. It'll just be like a separate attachment, if that's what you need to see have done. I noticed uh, you do have some on an 8.5 by 14, and that's uh, much more legible uh, right. than the 8.5 by 11. Yeah, we, we did some, like I say, some we were able to do, but this one, we left it that way, say, because the printer was getting... I guess annoyed with having to pause, switch out of paper sizes, and it was doing a lot of jams. So, so why, don't do, why don't you just do it for the uh, board members who request it? You, you don't have to do it for all of us. Maybe Dr. Barr well, and everybody else. Yeah, and say, just put, go ahead. Y'all say, just do it for the board members who request it. Okay. And that's right. That's a good, that's a good point. Uh, you know, I have difficulty seeing this, so that's why I... Uh, keep bringing it up, but uh, yeah, I do I, that. I, well, but I, but, but I, I got I got to stay up to help. I just print it out. All the time. That's what I have to, have to do from here. You have to stay up. So we'll make sure these pages that you just called out the next time are legal size. Okay, I certainly would appreciate it. Uh, thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, you have to do it for all of us. Just do it for the members who request. Okay. Okay, uh, moving on. I've got a quick question, if I may. Okay, go ahead, uh, Mr. Smith. I just want to confirm with Roz. Uh, on the top of your narrative, so I'm on page 10. Mm -hmm. It says that um, expenses on the expense line year to date were at 79% of budget. But then when you go down to um, your detailed analysis, so I'm looking at page 15. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's 62% of budget. So what happened, we made a change. If you look in my income, my net incomes, and again, that was a question I was asking myself, where we used to include the depreciation in the budget, now Ms. Andrews, are you there? Oh, hold on one second, Dr. Morris. Okay. Technology. I think I think she's coming in here. Okay, uh, Ms. Andrews is coming. Sorry about that, uh, committee members. Internet. Can you um, get us a message during your call, Jeremy, and ask him to check the offer and some gear? Yes. Okay, I'm here. Can everybody hear me okay? Uh, yes. Okay. All right. So, yeah. thanks, Andy. Um, I didn't know I was cut off, so I'm not sure.
snapshot of the DBE utilization, and this is for Transdale trans invoice period from March 1st through March 31st, uh, 2020. Uh, during this time period, the amount that was paid to DBE was uh, approximately $401,000. This brings the total amount paid to DBE to 16, approximately $16.9 million. And the amount that the comment has paid Transdale as of the same time period is $61.7 million, as you heard earlier from Rosin's report. And if you calculate the total amount paid to DBE to date uh, by the amount that we have paid Transdev, it brings the contract goal to 27.4%. Um, and this number will continue to change as we continue to make payments to uh, Transdev. Okay, this ends uh, the report. Uh, Ms. Um, uh, Dr. Prince, uh, yes. we are nearing we are nearing the end of the uh, fiscal year. Uh, in terms of meeting the DBEs, how do we stand overall? Well, right now, of course, you know the DBE goal is, the contract goal is 25.9%. So we are exceeding that based on what we have paid them as of the March invoice period. We probably won't know for sure until we get closer to the very, I'll say probably the month prior to uh, the end of the contract period because this the calculation is going to be based on what we have paid to the to Transdale. So right now it's showing that we are we are over that amount because it shows that the calculation is 27.4 percent and we have to meet 25.9 percent. So that's a bundle. Okay, that's good. But then I wonder whether or not that is going to bring the 25.9 up by the end of the year. And I guess anyway. we will, and I guess we'll know that once, I guess cause we'll have to see all the invoices that Transdev send to us uh, for payment. Because we have paid them up through March, so we really have what, April, May, and then June, so we have three more months to pay them. Okay, okay. Now, uh, Mr. Andor, uh, if they don't meet this by the end of the fiscal year, would we uh, charge them liquidated uh, damages? Well, um, as you recall, back in 2018, based on their non-compliance, the board did agree to, uh, or Transit did agree to pay $100,000 liquidated damage, and that, um, no further uh, liquidated damages would be assessed in relation to this. So in essence, they've already paid their liquidated damage for non-compliance. Oh, okay, all right. So, so they can walk out not, not paying any more um, DBE funds. So that is correct. Oh, and, uh, and, and since uh, they are not proposing to operate the comment system, at this point, it's, I guess, um, ir irrelevant. Okay. Does, does that make sense? So I guess there's, no, there's sense. really no, there's no incentive for them at the 60-day mark to even try. Right. Okay. And I don't want to continue to talk about this because uh, it's a public meeting. Anyway, uh, let's go on to, um, are we finished, uh, Dr. Prince? Uh, yes, that's it for me. Okay. Um, thank you very much. We're moving to uh, a discussion and action items. Uh, Mr. Andor. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Our first item that we have is the fiscal year 2020-2021 budget. And I will ask Ms. Andrews to highlight that, and then I'll talk about a few points in it. Okay, um, can everybody still hear me okay? Yep. Yes. Okay, so the, you have a memo here that John wrote up, so I won't read all of it, but to, again, to highlight where he said, the fiscal, this budget, um, let me go down. Let me find my spot, guys. Okay. All right. So you refer to page 33. That's where I'll begin. 
and again, won't touch on all of the line items, but overall, our um, total revenues, looking midway down page 34, our proposed budget, I mean approved budget for FY20, that number there, 37,000, 37 million to look to the side. Due to the CARES Act funding, we were able to um, put in more revenues, roughly about, I'm going to say, a little under 7 million. So that increased our FY20 budget. But for FY2021, we're asking a revenue line of a little over 33 million. That change between the two goes down about 10%, broken out by operating and capital budget or operating budget for FY2020, 2021. It's a little under $30 million, the capital budget being $7.5 million. Expenses, if you roll down to the expenses, again, um, we have in here highlighted some other extra items where I'd like to begin first. Salaries did increase by almost 50%. We're planning on expanding staff, and that also includes any increases by merit pay and cost of living. The operational contract operator. Of course, you know we're in negotiations now with a new contract operator, so their rate increased a little more than expected. Um, there are some service enhancements that we're expecting to go up. But overall, if you're looking at the bottom of page 35, total expenses went up uh, versus FY 1920 to 2021. We had a slight increase of about 12%, which would leave us, if all goes well, with a Net income of a little less than two hundred child two hundred thousand dollars. And if we're if we get lucky and getting more money, if you're looking down through page thirty six for any reserves that we have over, um, according to policy, we do put some of that money into our reserve account. So looking down underneath the black line, you see where I showed that we did put in another deposit to our local government investment pool of one point five million in FY nineteen twenty. We didn't budget any for 2021 because as right now, um, there's nothing to show. But as money comes in from Richland County and in addition with the money that we get from the CARES Act, the plan is to put some of Richland County funds into the um, reserve account. And that will be the end unless you have any questions. I was just want to highlight on a few things uh, for the committee members to make sure that they understand in this 2021 budget. First and foremost, we're recommending that we don't charge fares next fiscal year. Uh, in light of COVID-19 and then get the need to rebuild ridership and with this CARES Act funding, we are proposing that the CARES Act funding will in essence cover the cost of fares so we can rebuild our ridership and hopefully get back to where we were pre-COVID-19. The second thing is uh, we are, we have requested a 15% increase from Lexington County communities uh, in their contributions because of the cost increases of the contract operator. And that is going through their budget process now. Newberry County, we've requested $2,500 from them and that is in their budget process now. That would have been the incremental increase we projected had we had gotten 5311 and included 93X in the 5311 uh, routing. We are projecting that um, to a full, uh, we are, we've included the cost based on the best and final negotiations with the proposed contractor. Those costs are included in this budget. And I would like the committee to make sure that they understand that this contract is a bit different from the TransDev contract, and it excludes uh, customer service, landscaping, security, non-revenue vehicles, paratransit software. So there's not a true apples to apples comparison, but when you add up all those costs collectively, uh, we're about a 15% increase over what we're paying TransDev, which is expected uh, recognizing that the budget that we got from Transit was five years ago. So uh, as, as part of that, the Comet staffing is proposed to increase by six. We are uh, requesting to add a lead customer experience representative, four and a half customer experience representative, a procurement and contract specialist or manager, which will be filled at a later date. This person is also going to be 
responsible for reporting on all of the comments DBE and MBE that the board recently adopted a policy so that we're getting more aggressive in ensuring that all of our contractors and consultants that have a DBE goal are reporting appropriately. And then we are proposing to reclassify the transit operations specialist into a customer experience and contract compliance manager, which will be responsible for customer service in essence, ensuring that our customers have a great experience on the comment, as well as all of our contracts that are customer facing. So security, landscaping, facility maintenance, transit operations, et cetera. We still propose to have two contracted positions, one from ABLE and one from IT1 Solutions. And then we have some capital projects that are shown on page 31. We are anticipating that we will need to still review service level because we don't know what sales tax revenues are going to be. The state recently released projections that sales tax revenue was down 28%. While online sales are up, overall sales tax revenue is down 28%. So we were conservative in not budgeting $18 million of Richmond County. We actually budgeted $16 million. And while Richmond County is projecting a 1% increase based on their latest budget, from what I'm hearing just across the country, a lot of transit agencies that are dependent on sales tax revenues are actually reducing their sales tax revenues significantly. And I would advise that we do the same until we can see what happens post-COVID and post if this COVID-19 strikes again sometime in the fall. So we're going to be heavily reliant on federal revenues this fiscal year as well as that CARES Act funding. There is discussion that another round of CARES Act or another round of stimulus funding could come about which could benefit public transit operations. And if that happens, we would more likely need to do a budget amendment based on what we receive and then also seeing how the sales tax revenues are to be. My understanding is on the state mass transit side, the House and the General Assembly passed a continuing resolution. So I have not heard that state mass transit revenues would decline, but since that does come from the general fund and from gasoline sales tax and gasoline sales tax revenues are down, I could expect that SCGOT may issue a reallocation of state mass transit funds sometime in the next three to six months. So we just need to be cautious of that. So I will pause there and see if there's any questions. Yes, I have some questions. Let's take a look at, let's go back to the fare free. At our last board meeting, I think we voted to not to have a full year of fare free. I can't, I don't have that motion before me, but Mr. Andrew, you probably, or Mr. Smith, I know you also amend the motion. And I have some concerns about fare free for the entire year. So could you talk about that in light of the motion that we had made at the last board meeting? As you know, that was pre-COVID-19. So with COVID-19, we've been fare free since March 19 of 2020. And because we have this extra funding, my recommendation is that we use this extra funding to cover the cost of passenger fares, which I'll be honest, because we're down 37% right now, it's going to take a while to recover. So by going fare free for at least a year and us spending down this COVID-19 money, that would allow us to regain our ridership. And then we can revisit, or my recommendation is that we revisit fare collection sometime in calendar year 2021, after we see what happens. I think we should refer this 
to the board. They get more uh, input as opposed to the finance committee uh, approving this. And, uh, you know, whatever uh, the board uh, thinks, then, you know, that would be fine with me as the chair of the finance committee. Okay. Uh, the second piece here, if you look at uh, page 30, I see you said six position, but I think I see uh, six and a half. Uh, you have a lead customer experience representative, that's one plus 4.5, that's um, uh, 5.5. Plus, you have a procurement uh, person. Uh, that's 6.5. And I, I don't feel comfortable um, knowing that. Right now, we have federal funds, but that could dry up today or tomorrow. We had said, uh, Mr. Andor, when you came in, we were going to cut some staff, which we did, or cut some position, rather. Now we are talking about adding six. I don't feel too comfortable with that. I think uh, that should go back to the board. Um, so, Dr. I, Morris, uh, let me let me just make sure that you understand. Uh, the reason why that we're adding the six is because we are taking over. It's been recommended uh, by the Transit Operations Ad Hoc Committee meeting, which was approved by the board, that we're going to assume customer service. So. If we're going to assume customer service, we have to add these positions. Us assuming customer service is, is actually $100,000 less than if we have the contractor provide those positions based on our analysis. So that, that's why that, that's where the, these positions come from. If, if the board does not want to, um, us to do customer service and wants the contractor to do that, we just need to be prepared to add this the cost of these positions plus an additional hundred thousand on top of that. Um, you know what you were saying. I, I certainly agree with it, but I don't feel comfortable, and I think we should refer it uh, to the board for more discussion. Okay. Yeah, I just need I just uh, all this need direction from the board because we have to have customer service. So either we pay two hundred and forty three thousand. Uh, to do this, or we pay 343000 through the contractor. So I, I will leave that at your guys' discretion. I, I understand. Uh, uh, Representative Howard or uh, uh, Mr. Smith? Yeah, I've got a few comments, if, if I may. Um, on, the, on the fair free question, um, I, you know, we, we are kind of living in a new world. Um, and I think most of our conversation around fair free was pre COVID. Um, and on top of that, we've, we've gotten a pretty significant, um, uh, I don't want to say windfall, but I, I will, you know, from, from the feds, especially this current fiscal year, the six point, well, what is it? Uh, six and a half million that we've gotten from the cares act that we're essentially you know, replacing penny funds with, and then we're going to, they're going to put penny funds in reserve, if I understand correctly. Yeah. Um, well, I, you know, I think we've got to make a case that this, this funding, this federal funding is being, I know it's, there's, it's really no strings attached, at least right now, but I, I don't know that I believe that. <laughs> I think we've got to make a case that we're using those funds wisely. And one really wise way to do that is, is to, uh, make service free um at least in my my mind um i could be wrong i could you know i could be looking at this incorrectly um but but i think we have to we have to understand that you know our whole matrix is just completely different um than it was four months ago uh and and included in that i i so I would be willing to advocate for a continued carefree program until we get to a point where we're more or less back to normal. Um, so that's that's my position on that, and I think we could um, we could and and with the the question of the added positions, I you know what what Mr. Ando said is is correct. The, the ad hoc committee 
explicitly said that we would take over the customer service portion because we had concerns with our current contractor on their attentiveness to the customer service. So we said we wanted that back in house and we've got to fund it. I mean, there's no, we, if, if we say that, then we've got to, you know, we've got to, we've got to set aside funding to, to cover that function. And there's no way to go back and make the, at least I don't think, to make the contractor do it. Um, uh, so, but on both of those items, I would suggest continued conversation at the board level, but I think we've got to come with a recommendation at this point, um, given where we are in the fiscal year. So, I mean, I think what I'm working towards is my suggestion would be that the finance committee make a, a recommendation to, to the to the um, board that we adopt this budget contingent on some further discussion at the board level about those two items. I, um, I don't have. I don't have a problem with uh, making a recommendation to the full board and let's hear a uh, discussion from the board. I just don't want to get into, uh, from my perspective now, to get into uh, approving a motion and without uh, more of our colleagues uh, not speaking on this motion. Right. Well, we can't, we can't, all we can do at this point is recommend. We can't adopt the budget as a finance committee. We just recommend right. it. Right? So, and the other thing, so I wanted to continue this conversation about, I want to make sure I understand. So I'm on page 34 and I'm looking at the salaries expenses and I see the variance from the, you know, 2020 budget to the proposed 2021. That's the six added positions. Um, we have to sort of compare that to line to the con you know to the contractor lines on the next page and say well the contractor lines didn't go up very much but that's because we carved out one significant function and brought it back in house is that correct John is that am I reading that right I, uh, uh, can you just restate the question that I'm trying to understand I'm sorry well so so what I'm saying is I, when I look at the contractor the fixed the fixed route line on page 35 Yes. It's not going up very much, but that's because we carved out one key component of the previous contract and we're bringing that in-house. Well, there's that, but also because um, we split up the cost of the contractor. Overall, the cost of the contractor is about $17 million, okay. and that's split up between various line items, and those line items are contractor fixed route, contractor DART, 6311 rural expenses, preventative maintenance, uh, federal expense preventative maintenance, and uh, federal expense ADA paratransit, and federal expense transit operations. Okay. okay. But you also have to remember, too, that about a million is also outside of the contractor. That would have been within TransDev today. And that's customer service, landscaping, janitorial, security, non-revenue right. vehicles, and, para and paratransit software. Right. right, right. That was that was my point. That a big chunk of that is because we're taking over the the customer service. Okay. Um, and then the only the, the other thing I noticed. Um, this is not terribly significant. It doesn't change the budget much. But I did notice that the health insurance expense, the employer portion for uh, our employees went down significantly. It looks like we're only budgeting one month. For, for, which, month. for which line item, I'm sorry? Uh, well, it's, it's on page 34, and it's about, you know, it's under expense, expense. It would be the fourth line item down under expenses. Is that a formula error? Yes. Okay, yeah. Correct that one. Um, and I, I call it that because I'm familiar with PIBA and their rate. <laughs> so. uh, good catch. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Are there any more questions on this? Okay. Uh, hearing none. 
um, let's move on to. Uh, uh, we'll, um, we'll, need a, we'll need a motion, uh, Dr. Morris, on uh, what you'd like to do about this. So I can make that motion. I I, I make a motion that we um, recommend uh, this budget uh, for consideration by the full board, contingent upon discussion about those two items: the fair free question and the added position. Uh, I'll second that. Would you repeat it so we could uh, make sure we have it verbatim? Yeah, let me let me think about it. Okay, so I recommend that, or I, I make a motion that the Finance Committee recommends this budget for adoption by the board with the understanding that there will be discussion at the board about fair free and added positions to cover customer service. Okay, Mrs. Jenkins, do you have that? Yes, sir. Okay, would you read it back? Yes, hold on, I'm, I'm dropping it down. Okay, um, recommend, to, recommend to the board from the Finance Committee um, adoption. Wait a minute, hold on. Sorry, my notes are kind of scattered. Andy, can you do it one more time? Just make sure that I got the beginning right. Okay, so I, I um, make the motion that the Finance Committee recommends to the full board adoption of this proposed budget uh, with the understanding that we will have a conversation at the board level about fair free and um, uh, the six positions, added positions for customer service. Okay, is this recorded? Yes, sir. You want to uh, read it and just make sure that you understand? Okay. Um, recommendation from the Finance Committee for full board for adoption. Um, for adoption of the budget. Of the budget. Sorry, I with, it everywhere. With a discussion, contingent, contingent upon a, dis uh, with a discussion on oh, fair oh, free oh, fair and the addition of a customer service position. Yep, got it. So, so repay one more time. <laughs> I want to make sure we, we're all on the all same right, page here, please. Uh, the, the Finance Committee recommend for full board adoption um, of the budget um, <laughs> with the contingency of the addition of the fair free and the customer service position. No, on a contingency upon a, having a discussion on the fair free and customer service. So okay. let's read it one more time. Oh my God. Okay. okay. Recommend from the Finance Committee to the full board adoption of the budget um, with the contingency of discussion on the customer service and the um, fair free. No, uh, no. Okay. contingency on the fair free and the additional customer service fair free. position. Yeah. Okay. One, one more time. <laughs> okay. All right, let's try one more time. <laughs> um, recommend from, from the Finance Committee um, for the full board to adopt the budget with the contingency of the fair, a discussion of fair free and additional customer service positions. Perfect. Uh, Does that cool. sound good? <laughs> that sounds good. All right. Thank you. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Those in favor, vote by saying aye. 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 Uh, Representative Halbert, are you there? Yeah, aye. Okay. Uh, uh, those opposed, vote by saying nay. Hearing none, the motion unanimously carries. Okay. Um, moving on to. Uh, authorized award of transit advertising request of proposal RFP. Uh, Mr. Andrew, would you explain that, please? Yes, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, I'm recommending that the Finance Committee recommend the book to the board 
and authorize the executive director to negotiate and upon successful negotiations execute a contract with Gateway Outdoor Advertising to provide advertising on buses, bus benches, and bus shelters for a 10-year contract with one five-year option. Uh, should negotiations fail, authorize the executive director CEO to move to the second vendor and negotiate and upon successful negotiations execute a contract with street level media for bus and bus shelter advertising and fuel line media for bus bench advertising for a 10-year contract with one five-year option. Uh, since this staff report has been written, uh, Gateway has given us a better best and final offer, which I have uh, provided to you via email. They have increased their minimum guaranteed compensation from 60000 in year one, year two, and year three to uh, 110000 in years one, two, and three, or 55% if they exceed the minimum. So with that in mind, I, I find that Gateway Outdoor is our best value, uh, and we will have, at least in year one, a guaranteed revenue amount of, of 110000 that we can budget for uh, versus the 60000 that they were originally uh, proposing. Uh, the purpose of this advertising RFP that we released is to get a vendor that can sell advertisements on the buses, the bus shelters, the bus benches, as well as uh, inside Comet Central to generate additional revenue for the Comet. Uh, presently, our two contractors that are providing the service is providing lackluster service, generating less than uh, $50,000 a year in revenue. So uh, this RFP was robust enough to where we can generate additional revenue. Ultimately, under Gateway, we would get about uh, $2.8 million if we only got the minimum for each of the years through the lifespan. Gateway is also proposing to install 100 benches. Uh, within six months, and then 25 benches every year thereafter uh, throughout our service area at no cost to the Comet. And they're also going to install seven shelters with advertising throughout our service area at no cost to the Comet. They will be responsible for permitting, ensuring ADA compliance, and engineering for those benches and those shelters. Uh, so that co coincides with the plan that the bus that the board of directors adopted in relation to adding additional passenger amenities throughout the service area within the next three to five years. You have to answer any questions, if there are any. I I have two two questions. Um, one, did you say initially that uh, they offer this uh, work uh, contract for sixty thousand? And now it's increased it to a hundred thousand. A hundred and ten thousand in year one as a minimum guarantee. That's correct. Okay, um, that's a big jump, isn't it? Yes, they really want the work because their number two was going to guarantee that in year one, and I told them that basically, uh, if if you can't increase your compensation, I'll have to do a best and final offer and see who can give us the best. So to, to increase it, it's in our favor? Yes. Oh, yes, because that's guaranteed revenue to the common. So okay. if they don't sell advertisements for one year, we will, regardless of what they sell, we get a guaranteed $110,000 this upcoming okay, fiscal year. If they, exceed, right. if they exceed 110, then we get 55% of all revenues over 110000 Okay, good. That that sounds great. Now, uh, why a ten-year contract? Uh, the reason why is because they're expending money to build bus shelters and bus benches, and they need to depreciate those costs. And the longer frame contract allows them to do that. We did the same in 2006 with the contract that we presently have with Creative Outdoor for those advertising benches that you see throughout the service area. So that contract okay, okay. was executed in 2006, and it's about to expire in January of 2021. Okay, uh, thank you. Anyone else? Uh, yes, sir, uh, Mr. Chairman. A question, Ms. Andrew. Um, 
maybe a little bit off the subject, but um, in the wake of COVID-19, um, how are we doing the bus stop and the bus? Do we have someone that's cleaning them and how much are we paying for that? So um, we, we are, Transdev is responsible for doing that, and that's built within their budget, and they have a contractor that's doing that work. Uh, we have asked them to do additional cleaning, and we'll actually be talking about that in the next item, but we budgeted about $50,000 of CARES Act funding to pay for the additional cleaning to ensure that those bus shelters are safe and pressure washed. Okay, so so we have we have someone who's pressure washing the um, bus stops and the, the, the buses? That is correct. And so do you know how much we're paying that company? Per bus. Uh, let me open one second. Let me open up the transdev contract, and I can tell you that amount. Okay. So for the new flyer buses, it's fifty dollars per vehicle. Uh, that's the thirty-five foot. For the forty foot, it's fifty-five dollars per vehicle. For the dark vans, it's thirty-five dollars per vehicle. For the minivans, it's thirty dollars per vehicle. For the cutaways, it's forty-five dollars per vehicle. For the cars, it's twenty-five dollars per vehicle. For the trolleys, it's forty-two dollars per vehicle. Okay. And that's what Transdev negotiated with their DBE subcontractor for those services. And what we've agreed is that we're paying for because we're doing extra detailing. Transdev is paying for two, and we're paying for two. So that means every week the vehicles are getting detailed. Okay. okay. Sounds good. All right. Thank and you. We're, and we budgeted that in the CARES Act funding, which we'll talk about in the next uh, agenda item. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, are there any more questions? I have a quick one. Um, I just want to make sure I understand how the um, advertising contract works. So, John, they – they build shelters for us, is that correct? Or is it they just supply the advertising pieces of the shelters and the benches? I, no, they're they, actually they going work? to build a, a seven bus shelters for us. They threw that in as an added value. Okay, and they're, so that's essentially seven that we wouldn't have to build our, on our own through our, our program. Our uh, that is correct. So we don't have to incur any engineering costs, permit costs, cement costs, or infrastructure costs. All right. And so they do they and they do the, the legwork to determine, you know, easements and property acquisition yes. and all that stuff. Yes, that was explicit in the RFP that they will have to work with SCDOP and the city based on where they want to place them um, to um, to get those uh, rights. And then, they, and then an added value to this, at the end of the contract, those seven shelters would revert ownership to the common. Okay. And, uh, but they're still adding advertisement to other shelters too, right? Our existing shelters and other ones that we, we put in? That is correct. Since we've okay. added advertising panels to uh, about 80% of the bus shelters in the service area, they'll be responsible for selling the ads in those in those shelters. Okay. Uh, a question. Would uh, at any time we have to spend additional monies to make those uh, shelters, uh, benches, or whatever advertisement ready? Um, for the balance 20%, they stated that they'll come up with a creative way to advertise on those shelters without us spending any money. All the shelters that we purchased based on the board action of the new contractor that's providing shelters, they already have advertising panels built into them. So we have about 20% of our shelters that do not have advertising panels. Okay, thank you. Uh, are there any more questions, Representative Howard, Mr. Smith? Oh, okay. And do we have a question? No, no sir. sir. Okay. Moving on to page 40. Uh, could we accept that as a motion? 
the requested action from the staff on the top of page 40. Let me read it real quick. May I ask for an amendment to that motion in light of the new information I have? Okay, well, give give him a, a chance to read it, please. Okay, and what's the amendment? The amendment is to uh, authorize the executive director to uh, enter into a contract with Gateway Outdoor for a 10-year uh a uh, 10-year contract with one five-year option to sell advertisements on the common buses, bus shelters, and bus benches. Well, you just add the the, uh, the second piece because it's already there about the 10-year uh, with five-year option. Yeah, I'm just deleting the if negotiations fail because uh, I don't think negotiations are going to fail. They want to they want the work, and they gave us a good proposal. Okay. All right. Uh, that addendum, uh, that would be the uh, only piece you would want to add. Uh, we would uh, p put in this uh, motion. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, would you repeat that addendum for um, Ms. Jenica? Yes. Um, the Finance Committee recommends to the Board of Directors to authorize the executive director to enter into a contract with Gateway with a 10-year contract um, with the addition of one five years as an option. And, and the addendum, Mr. Uh, Mr. Andor? Uh, no, that, uh, Ms. Jurgensen said it. That's a 10-year with five one-year option, a, five, a one five-year option. So Ms. Jurgensen said okay. it correctly. But that's, that's that's you again, if you like. The phrase to provide oh, okay. on buses, but bus oh, and bus I'm shelters. I'm sorry. Yes, to 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 advertise on the comments, bus shelters, bus buses, bus shelters, and bus benches. You can repeat yes, that. Yes. Okay. So um, the finance committee recommends to the board of directors to authorize executive director CEO to negotiate. Um, I'm sorry to um, enter into a contract with Gateway Outdoor ad Advertising to provide advertising on buses bus benches and bus shelters for a 10-year contract with a five-year option. One okay. Uh, is that it, Mr. Uh, Andor? That is correct. Okay. Uh, do I have a, a, a motion and a second? I'll make that motion. Okay. I'll second it. It's been probably moved and second. That we uh, adopt the uh, motion that was just read. Are there any questions? Hearing none, those in favor vote by saying aye. 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 Opposers, nay. Hearing none, the motion unanimous, unanimously passed. Okay, uh, authorized award of engineering request for qualification. Uh, R-F-O to um, Brownstone. Yes, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, we are going to go to page 220. And uh, based on the last month's action uh, to negotiate with Brownstone, I have I've had negotiation meetings with Brownstone, and uh, we've come up with a reasonable uh, proposal for a contract for the board's consideration. Uh, they were the recommended engineering firm to continue to provide engineering services for the comment, and their proposed rate sheet is uh, on pages. Uh, let's see, let me make sure I get to you there. Oh, there it is. It's on page 278. Uh, basically, the engineer would cost $150 an hour. The architect will cost $165 an hour. A junior engineer would cost $110 an hour. An engineering technician would cost $85 an hour. Administrative support would cost $65 an hour. When I compare this to the other prices that we received from the other four vendors, Brownstone was the lowest. 
Presently, we pay $115 an hour for all, for all positions, regardless of the position. So this tiered structure would allow us to uh, pay less for lower utilized uh, positions, such as the administrative manager when she does some of our engineering-related procurements, or a junior engineer when they're going out to survey bus stops or permit for bus stops. So we anticipate that we're going to need to budget approximately $298,000 for engineering support for this upcoming fiscal year to, um, to um, help us like with bus stop projects and any other capital projects that the Comet may uh, uh, require. And I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have on this. Are there any questions? How, how does this compare with the action, or how does it square with the action we took last last finance meeting? Last finance meeting was to authorize the executive director to negotiate and return back with the proposed contract. Because under the FTA rules, you can't score a engineering firm based on price. You have to score them based on qualification, and you have to negotiate the price. Okay. All right, so we're at the point. We're at the point where we've done that, and we're just okay. All right, so this is kind of phase two. This is phase two. Yes. All right. Okay. Um, uh, what's what's our pleasure? We have a motion on page uh, from Mr. Andor on page two twenty. Um, I, you know, I'll make that motion that the Finance Committee recommend to the Board of Directors to authorize the award of contract with Brownstone slash Davis Employed to provide engineering and design consulting services for a three-year period with two one-year options for renewal. Uh, I'll second it. It has been proper move and second. Are there any questions? Those in favor, vote by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Hearing none, the motion unanimously passes. Okay, uh, moving on to uh, D. Authorized execution of trapeze uh, amendment number three for paratransit software and associate equipment. Ms. Andor? Yes, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Um, this is to um, authorize action to execute Amendment 3 with Trapeze Software Group for paratransit software and associated equipment. So this is a historical item. Back in 1999, before the comment existed, the Central Midlands Council of Governments went out to bid and procured Trapeze, PAP, to support our ADA paratransit scheduling for paratransit for the DART program. When Common took over DART in, 19, in 2002, there are six licenses that were part of the software license and maintenance agreement. We continue to pay those licenses up until 2015. In July of 2015, uh, the Comet asked TransDev to provide trapeze, but our, but our original licenses remain dormant for the past five years. In order to clean up these agreements because of from additional research on the matter, it didn't seem like we cleaned up this matter properly. So I had to execute amendment number one to one, transfer the trapeze license from the COG to the Comet, uh, since we now exist and we own those licenses. Two, because we needed to monitor for contract compliance purposes, for, uh, purposes DART compliance with operate or uh, transit compliance with operating DART, we had to obtain a second license, which we told Transdev we would, to allow our director of regulatory compliance, the civil rights officer, to have access into the program. So that's amendment number two, which costs $700 per year. This third amendment is now to. Um, upgrade is because we did not ask the new operator to provide a paratransit software and paratransit equipment in an effort to reduce costs. We need to provide that equipment and software. So amendment number three does the following items. 
it upgrades paths from version 12 to version 20. So we're operating a very old path system under TransDev right now. And technically, they were supposed to upgrade paths, which is why we shifted it to them initially. We will install driver mates on 25 dark vehicles so that the drivers can get the manifest. We would install a program called passenger notification, which means that it will call all the passengers automatically to let them know that their dark bus is coming. This will reduce call volumes to dark. They can also get information via text, automated calling through an app or via email. And then we would install passenger portal. This will allow dark and reflex passengers to make reservations via an app or online to reduce calls to dark. And then lastly, uh, training will be provided to Comet staff and the new contract operator staff to utilize these new features. Uh, outside the amendment, we would pay $42,000 uh, plus uh, CPI for licensing fees. And then there's a one-time capital cost of $210,417 for the above items. Plus, we'll have to purchase tablets from our cellular provider to uh, um, ensure that the vehicles have service for those tablets. All of these costs will be borne by FTA funds at an 80% match, so our local match would be 20% uh, of that cost. And I am asking that um, the board authorizes me to execute amendment number three. Um, and, and, and any questions? Um, so just real quick, basically, I mean, it's this is really just to bring us into <laughs> the modern world, as it were, with, with respect to, you know, this particular aspect of our service, right? I mean, it's, that is, that it's, is it's, correct. Kind of, it's, it's, it's kind of a necessity. We can't really continue operating the way we are with the data tracking system. That, that is correct for the paratransit side, yes. Right. Okay, um, uh, Mr. Andor, uh, where you have in your uh, recommended action, uh, after amendment number three, could you put in parentheses what amendment number three says? Uh, one second. <clears throat> You just stated a, a few seconds ago. Uh, with Trapeze Software Group for Paratransit Software and Associated Equipment? No, uh, Amendment 3. Whatever Amendment 3 says. Is there a title for it? Oh, a title for Amendment 3. Um, oh, Software and Licensing Agreement. Amendment three of the software and licensing, software maintenance and licensing agreement. All right, I guess that would be sufficient. Uh, I thought earlier you had said specifically uh, what we're going to be executing. Yes, I mean, if you go to page uh, 319, there's a software license agreement, that's the title of, of the amendment three, and then on page find the maintenance agreement. And then on page 343, it's the maintenance agreement, amendment three for that as well. So I, I, I guess I'll add software license and maintenance agreement. All right, that would be fine. Okay, um, Ms. Jergen, do you have the uh, uh, amendment there. I mean, do you have the motion? Yes, the board um, recommend or the finance committee recommends to the board to authorize amendment number three, which is the software li and license agreement or software maintenance and license agreement with Trapeze Software Group for paratransit software and associated equipment. Okay, uh, is that it? Anyone would like to? Make that motion. Just a real quick question. Is this 
it's a fiscal 21 expense and is it budgeted? It is a fiscal 21 expense and it's budgeted in the 21 budget. Okay. Under federal revenue uh, ADP software and federal revenue ADP hardware. All right. Uh, so I'll make that motion. I'll second. Um, uh, those are those in uh, the any question. Those in favor vote by saying aye. 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 Opposes nay. Ayes have it. The motion unanimously carries. Um, moving on to E. Yes, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Mr. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. This uh, is requesting that the Finance Committee review the FY1920 CARES Act spending and recommend to the Board of Directors the proposed spending plan. Um, as you heard me previously mention, uh, we're getting $15,295,748 to the Columbia Urbanized Area from the CARES Act. And this funding is available immediately, retroactive to January 20, 2020, to reimburse operations related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, in addition, uh, we are getting uh, 213,180 from SCBOT for the rural operations uh, as part of their phase one. Because we are in the Columbia urbanized area and Santee Watery RTA operates bus services in Kershaw County, and they're a part of that urbanized area, um, CMCOG anticipates giving them some of this $15 million to them. Um, we have requested from the CMCOG $13 million, one, uh, uh, 13 million, uh, 13 million thousand one three hundred and eighty six of those CARES Act funding to support our operations. We are proposing and we discussed this with the COVID-19 ad hoc committee which is recommending this uh, for the board to consider that we would use this funding to pay for transit services for June 30, 2020, extra cleaning over and beyond the transit contract. So the items that uh, Representative Howard was asking about, such as the bus shelters, the, the additional detailing, testing of the employees, a service recognition bonus for employees who cannot work from home, supplies to protect employees and customers, protection equipment for the cutaway vehicles to ensure that the drivers are protected from passengers boarding the buses. I want to elaborate a little bit more on the service recognition bonus. The COVID-19 ad hoc committee wanted to find a way that we incentivize people who had to work during this condition, and that's the intent of the CARES Act funding. We've done research uh, from looking at other transit agencies, research what SC uh, do was doing to those that were furloughed and un unemployed, and uh, we've uh, determined that our lowest paid employee at the contractor that works for TCS will earn $440 a week. Uh, whereas somebody that's at home getting um, the stimulus funds plus the additional um, revenues from the federal government plus unemployment is getting $926 a week. So there, there's definitely an inequity. So, uh, and they can get this uh, funding for up to 39 weeks or through December 26, 2020, as long as there's no work available for them. Uh, the committee recommends that we provide a $200 per week bonus on top of all the employees that had to work uh, in, in, the public eye, in the public eye uh, during this period from March 23rd, 2020 to May 29, 2020 as part of the first phase. So this is 10 weeks, basically, of this incentivized bonus. Uh, originally, we proposed $100, but the, committee, the ad hoc committee uh, wanted to go to $200 to ensure that those that are the lowest paid employees are getting that equal pay that somebody sitting at home collecting unemployment is getting. So if you go to page number uh, 347, the proposed CARES Act budget spending plan is there for your review. You'll see that we are proposing to spend 
$6.1 million on trans-dev invoices, $29,000 for utility workers, $10,900 for extra detailing of the buses, $50,000 for bus stop cleaning, $54,000 for a quality assurance person within transport care services to ensure that the buses going out in service are meeting the contract requirements, $1,200 for masks, $202,000 for the Transdev Service Enhancement Bonus, $64,000 for the TCS Service Enhancement Bonus, uh, 32 employees for TCS, 101 employees for Transdev, $26,000 Service Enhancement Bonus for the Comet at 13, $365 for dark shower curtains to, and the cutaway vehicles, $365 for Comet shower curtains and the cutaway vehicles, $1,800 for testing of TransDev employees, 143, $2,652, actually that should be reversed again, my apologies, $2,652 for TransDev at 143 employees, $1,859 for TCS employees at 52, $663 for the common employees at 13, $525 for dark hand sanitizers, $800 for a cutaway driver barrier test, and $75,000 for extra contingency, which uh, gives us that we would spend $6.5 million this fiscal year on COVID-19 expenses, which in essence means that $6.5 million uh, of the penny funds that we would have spent will be shifted to reserve. We would carry forward $6.6 million the fiscal year 2021, which we incorporated into the 2021 budget. I will pause there and ask and see if there's any questions on this proposed spending plan. Yeah, I remember at our last finance uh, uh, committee meeting, we had some questions about uh, paying uh, additional monies to employees who come to work. Um, I have since changed my thinking on that, uh, certainly if an uh, employee is at home and making additional monies than the employee at work, we should do something to uh, equalize the salary plus provide the individuals who come into work an additional bonus. Correct. Now, I don't think you have uh, additional bonus in there. You have enough to uh, say that uh, the employee who is coming to work will get the same salary as the person who is uh, at home. Is that correct? No, because uh, they're already collecting a wage. So the bonus that we're proposing, which is why we're calling it a service recognition bonus, is to boost up their wages by $200 each additional week. So depending on the pay of the employee, uh, I would say about 85% of the employees will end up making about $150 more than somebody who's sitting at home. All right, good. Okay, and that, that's and that, was, that was the ultimate goal of why we're calling the service recognition bonus. So that we, we want people to, we want to thank them and recognize them that in light of what's going on, we appreciate you working and still serving the public. Because without them, there there would be no transit system right now. That's right. Okay, we certainly appreciate it. Any more questions? Just two real quick. Um, one, did I hear you say, John, that this was all vetted by the uh, ad hoc committee, COVID-19 yeah. ad hoc committee? Yes, and they're recommending approval to the board as well. Okay. All right. So and, this is financial. We're we'll bringing it into the finance committee. Okay. And then, um, as far as you know, to this point, there's no strings attached to this, this federal these federal funds that we're using for these purposes, right? That is correct. And in the packet, after uh, pages, um, I'm starting on page 348, you will see the presentation that FTA has provided. And they, it's explicitly clear they want you to spend the money as quickly as you can. There's no, we don't even have to put this in the tip. And if we're using it for operational related expenses, uh, we just need to apply for the funds, 
put the split letter in from the Council of Government, and they will award the money like literally within a week. Okay. So, uh, and you did. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm just going to say is... that there is a, um, as long as we meet those requirements that we're paying for operational expenses, which we are, and we're documenting them, there's no further strings attached associated with this money. Uh, and, there's so also no, and there's also no local match. I want to stress that as well. Right. Should we okay. make this recommendation to the board contingent upon successful receipt or, you know, successful application and receipt of the funds? I mean, that's it's kind of one of those things that I don't want to make a promise until we're... Yeah, I, I, think, that's, I think that's fair. I think that's a fair um, assessment. So that would be my recommendation is that we we um, recommend to the board this plan of use for CARES Act funding upon successful receipt of those funds. Uh, I'll second that. Uh, I have a question. Now, you did say the funds would be expected to through December? Um. No, the, the funds, we have the funds now. Uh, we, we are proposing this plan is the 6.5 would be spent through June 30th, 2020, and then we would carry forward the balance to the upcoming fiscal year budget. Okay, so af after June the 30th, uh, we have to come back and take a look at this again? No, because we've already built it into the 2021 budget. So that's where we're going to have the discussion with the board. Because my proposal is that we would use those funds to, in essence, replace fare collection and to cover a lot of our costs to pay the new contract operator. Okay. So if the board adopts the, if the board adopts the 2021 budget, then those funds are already programmed to cover our deficit that we. Um, of not getting additional Richland County sales tax revenue and fair revenue. Okay, uh, Ms. Jennifer, could you read back the motion? Yes. Um, the Finance Committee recommends to the board um, the, the, this plan of use of the CARES Act funding upon successful receipt of these funds. Okay. Is that it, uh, Mr. Smith? Yes, thank you. Okay, proper move and second. Um, are there any questions? Here are none. Uh, those in favor, vote by saying aye. 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 Uh, those opposed, vote by saying nay. Here are none. The motion unanimously carries. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Andor. Uh, moving to Legal action. You have yes. a legal. Uh, no, executive, no executive session, uh, Dr. Morris. Okay, none at this uh, session. Okay, um, I would like to thank all of you for participating. Uh, really, really appreciate uh, your effort. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. A second. Is it a proper move and second that uh, we adjourn? Are there any questions? Those in favor, vote by saying aye. Aye. Motion unanimous and carry. Thanks again, and have a, a great rest of your week. Thank you, and we'll talk to you on Friday. Okay, good. Thank you. Bye. Bye.